Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another program, Arise and Blossom with Dr. Arusha. This will be our final episode for this year. So it's a very special one. And today we'll be discussing a very fitting topic, all for love, with a very special guest, Marilyn Ballantyne, author of a book of poems called All for Love. In All for Love, the author seeks to awaken readers to the essential role love plays in human life, be it love of country, love of the environment, love of neighbor, love of foreigner, love of self, love of animal, love of deity, love of creator. I have read it. I got my copy on Amazon and I've read it from cover to cover. And I can tell you it is profound, it is beautiful, it is a masterful piece of literary work. And I would really like to congratulate Marilyn for a job well done. As usual, we will discuss the topic, we'll discuss her book and more in the interview segment. And then I will invite you, the audience members, to join, to join us and send in your comments, your questions for Marilyn to answer as best she can. Before she introduces herself, please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise. We thank you for another day, Lord God. We thank you for the gift of love. We thank you for showing us, Lord God, that you love us so much that you would send your only son to die on the cross so that we may have everlasting life. Lord, we know that you have commanded us to love you with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Lord, give us a deeper love, Lord God. Give us agape love. Lord, we want to thank you for Marilyn and her family. We pray a very special blessing over them. We thank you for the audience members, Lord God. You know each and every one of them by name. Help them to experience your love, Lord God, in new and profound ways. Help them to share love freely with others, Lord God. Lord, we give you this afternoon's program, and we give you again all honor, glory, and praise in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So Marilyn, over to you, please tell us a bit more about yourself, where you're from, and whatever you want to share with us, please go ahead. Well, first and foremost, thank you very much, audience and potential readers of this book, All for Love. Thank you for spending some time with us today. I am Marilyn Valentine from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I was born here. And in Vincentian dialect, we like to say, a Vinci to the bone. <laughs> so I'm a full Vincentian. Wherever I go, I'm a Vincentian. I've traveled widely all over Europe, never forgotten my roots. So that's it, basically. My dad was a pharmacist. For the older generation, they remember Crichton's Drugstore in Kingstown. And I knocked about there as a child with him. So I grew with that love for ordinary people and love for politicians in high places because he was a founding member of Mr. Milton Cato's party. So you understand the background. It was an ideal one for becoming a poet. I could touch from the sky down into the earth and that's a good thing. So to the audience, I say that's basically where I came out from. I went to prep school in case they're Vincentians listening. They'll remember me as Marilyn Crichton. At prep, I got a town board scholarship to the girls' high, and from there on went on with Arusha's beautiful mom to be sixth form students. And we both did poetry with Mr. Leroy Mulrain, folks Mulrain. We did poetry together with him. And I was very motivated and thanks to my friendship with Arusha's mom and our other friend Bernadette Burnett, we looked at a lot of poetry and I always felt one day, maybe one day, I would produce a book. So that you would hear about later on. I think I said a bit about my early and to continue to say that I went off to university. I wasn't even... 17 years yet, my dad had to sign something 
I got a Canadian scholarship and I was doing literature. But I met uh, Vincent and Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. He was a lecturer then, as was the Prime Minister's son's step, um, his wife's father, Professor Neville Duncan. And they both got me into the politics department. So <laughs> I started, st I changed from literature. And so I didn't really learn as much about poetry as I should have. That's the irony. But I learned a lot about politics, global politics, and law. And later on, you'll come to see that after I worked for a number of years with the United Nations Economic Commission, I saw a way doing full-time law, if even I didn't intend to practice, could help me to be performing at a higher level in my job. So I went off to England, I did a whole law degree and a bar. And here I am today in retirement as a poet. So I think I said enough. Wow. And I want the audience to have a good take away from that. So they see where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a very, very early entry into the world. So I observed and wrote some journals and my poetry reflects that early entry into life, into womanhood, being a responsible adult, observing, but it gave me a lot of material. And it's out of that, as you would come to hear, came the poems. Wow, 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 wow. A lot of experience as you share, and it warms my heart to hear that you studied uh, poetry with my mom in sixth form. Wow, interesting. God doesn't waste any talent, eh? So what, what you, you mentioned some of it, but if you can tell us what really inspired you to write this book, All for Love, and tell us a bit more about your book and the significance of the title that you chose. Right, well, when COVID came upon us, like so many other cases, you sort of, as we say in the nautical terms, you shift up. So my daughter said to me, a friend had a birthday party here for me in the March, the very month that COVID came to St. Vincent, March 7th was my birthday. And that was the day of our first case. And it is of relevance with what I'm going to unfold. So on that day, wonderful birthday party, and we went on, a lot of us, to an art show. Here in St. Vincent, we have the Yulo Art Center. It's a wonderful place. For those Vincents who are in the audience, check out Yulo. A lot of good art. Our people are, as you know, artists. So while they, a very long-standing friend, which is actually my neighbor from before my daughter was born, introduced me to two people and said that they were publishers. And she knew. And ever since she knew me, I had an interest in publishing, not only poetry, prose as well. And she said, Marilyn, they live here and everything is done. It goes on Amazon. It's a good opportunity. Don't start, you know, looking around. Go with them. And the seed was more or less planted there. Yes. And that, when we got home that night, my daughter said, I just saw that we had our first, first COVID case, the 7th of March, Saturday came in a young lawyer from England and she had COVID unfortunately. And that's where it started in St. Vincent. And my daughter right away said, mommy, I'm telling you now, I do not want you returning because I had been living for 15 years in Miami and working there. I do not see you in the workplace. So you know the balance. So I said, well, I can occupy my time. And honestly, it's like God took it in his hands, the hand of God. And I swear to you, she set up everything, the computer on a terrace, so I have a lot of air. And well, imagine it, sitting there, and I had all the material already in my head. I had come from Miami with a couple of poems, which will come on to, in my head and in my notes. And every day from that day forward, that was from, say, March 8th, I started the computer and I wrote. And by December, here it is, by December, I said to my daughter, I'm going into town to buy a folder, what for? 
for your gift. I'm making your gift. And I gave it, I made this myself. They're all typed up with an index. And this was her gift. And when I put it in her hand, she said, you know, before daddy passed, he said, you must publish your mother, you know, you must, because he loved some of these poems and all for love. He, he loved them. And said, you must publish your mother, you know. And she said, you know what, mommy? We met those publishers, we're going to go with it. So wow. this is a homemade book of a hundred that I handed to the publishers. And when they came to me and they said, they have 54, because I spoke about this all for love with Julie Cup, come to he, my daughter chose the name of the book. She oh. said that since I knew you, all my thinking of you is that you cook with love, you give the shirt on your back with love, you never grab for yourself, you always, you, you never ask daddy for anything you you're all, honestly mommy i'm so impressed with you you are love itself and i say god is love wow so 54 and when she said 54 the lady the publishers were just as and she, my daughter said well mommy a hundred and day why you let them to and i said listen god is guiding this let us go with it and you know what, 54, I was born in. So I want the audience to get an idea of my age. I was born <laughs> in 54. And I have an interest of some degree in numer numerology. Right. So 54 suited me. And that's what you have today. So that's and, uh, Yeah, 54 poems. Yes, the beautiful, beautiful poems. I read it, as I said, from cover to cover. That's how it all began. 54 from the center. So the balance of the poems, which will come to me, would come out in my new book, which will come out sometime next year, God will. Well, it's always good to save material for another time. So that's excellent. And congrats on that already. So and what is ask, important? About the, book, about the book. The book actually, shall I? Go right ahead. The book actually covers a topic which you had some time ago on Arise and Blossom, the love languages. Yes. And all over the world, people like adopted this thing, the different love. Affirmation, service, physical touch, words of affirmation, which I said, physical touch, quality time together, service and gifting. And throughout the book, not like directly, intentionally unfolded. When I look through the book, I can tell you half an empanada, but all of you, he's gifting me and these poems by the way come out of actual interactions with various people yes very interesting so how he's giving me an empanada the perfume you gave me saying how lovely it would be it's gifting time together like as in the poem ambling along sterling road walking hand in hand we are winners treasures we have the spiritual glow of the sunrise as we walk. We don't have riches, but we have treasures. We found treasure. Ambling along, quality time together. Words of affirmation, the thank you. Yes. It's the perfect thank you. And that's a true thing. He gave him a Jamaican party. This is a Jamaican man in that case. And as he exited, he just looked back at me. I would never, and he looked at me and he said, oh, thanks to the patty. Thank <laughs> you. Just a simple thank you. Yes. And also one you will see in the book, it covers the love languages, whichever is yours, you'll find some merit in following the poems in that context. Very, very profound. I, as you know, I, I love um, the expression um, of the, the love languages because it can fit different types of love, different types of relationships, you know, and so it's important that we understand and we communicate in a way that the receiver would appreciate and receive the love if we speak their love language, right? And as you say in your poem, we have the love languages being represented throughout the poem. So why is it important for us to give and receive unconditional love? Yes, very important question. And I feel that most people have a notion 
of unconditional love and conditional love. Mm -hmm. So basically, I mean, we are, we are not therapists and we are not here to get into the nitty gritty of right. every psychological, but generally, broadly speaking, I think we can all agree, and I would love the audience to think of maybe asking something about this. Unconditional love would be where you are giving freely. You are not giving because you are looking to get something back. And those who have the book, I'll refer them to page 58, the poem Lucky. And that is an example of unconditional love. Also the poem on page, again, page 54, <laughs> called Mother, Mother, Unconditional Love, Symbol of Love, of Angel on Earth, Angel in Heaven, Symbol of Unconditional Love. So the thing is, when you care for someone without an expectation, when the times get rough, you are likely to be building with that person. As again, that poem, Lucky says, together we bear each other's burden. We wow. carry the load, we carry each other's load. Whereas in conditional love, I'm loving you, I'm giving you love because I know if I do this, you will do that. And when time and circumstance changes, you're swayed away from that person. It's no longer the real thing. So let's say unconditional love is what God is telling us about. Yes. And, and it augurs, in short, well for a long-term, well-developed partnership. On that unconditional love. So chances are you can have the love of a lifetime. Maybe you can you can give testimony to that because they, you don't have the jealousy in conditional love. Nobody, no party is seeking to control the other, to be yes. selfish, you know? You, you're applying patience and understanding. So that basically answers what you are asking. And I am not, well, I even came here equipped with the verses in Corinthians and so on. But that's not my role today. But I have them handy. Just if at the end, I might just mention one or two. But we all, I think, read our Bibles. My Bible is always with me. This beautiful one that some friends gave to me and my daughter. And God is love. And Amen. he said we must do things lovingly with love. So that's it in a nutshell. Yes, I love, I love that reference to 1 Corinthians 13. As you say, unconditional love is giving love without expecting anything return. And it is loving no matter what. No matter what the outcome, we still love as God showed us, you know. There is nothing that can separate us from his love. And we have a, a, an explanation of what love is, as you say in 1 Corinthians 13, we know about love is and love is kind. Love should be shown without pretending. Yes. Romans 12, 9. Yes. That. So very, very profound. Very profound. Yes. Very profound. So what are some of the unexpected things you learned while putting this material together in All for Love? I have to say, Dr. Arusha, when I saw those questions, <laughs> I said, boy, this is hard work, but I'm never afraid of hard work. But I'll tell you how much I love that question, that question on unexpected. And you're going to see why. If you think you're the only one who loved your dad to the moon and back, as they say, I the three girls in my family. And it's it's not even questioned. Any conversation start, oh God, well, you know how he loves she. You know how daddy loves her. I'm the first, but it's not just that. It's one of those things. So unexpected things. Before I get to daddy, like you, and I think I heard you say something similar with your book. If someone had told me how proud, and I don't suffer suffer low esteem 
But if someone had told me how proud I would be when I would see that book out in the hands of readers and receive compliments, but not just compliments, but receive compliments that show that people enjoyed it and benefited from it. Yes. Like the woman who said to me, online dating, you don't know something about me. She was from the Philippines. She was a friend of my daughter. She said, I found my husband, my Vinci husband on the internet. I said, and I merely didn't put it in. I said, I want if young people or any age group would appreciate. She said, I love it. And she got on her social media platform and started to, she can't even speak English properly. She was talking about my book and telling people that it makes her smile and gives her hope. And yeah. there you go. That's the poem in all for love, all online dating. Yes. Something that I I am not into it. I won't, I can't do it, I won't do online. But you have to go with the times and you have to There's produce something for everybody. <laughs> exactly. So it made me very proud. I would say that first and foremost. It also made me question things like not question it because I didn't know it, but looking it over, identity, who you really are, character. And I'm saying this for those who are planning to write a book. It's not only just writing a book, whatever age you are, you are going to find it a very exhilarating experience as you did, Dr. Arusha. It's an experience It cannot really be described adequately. So. I saw honesty, integrity, true to purpose. I have a poem in the new book, true to oneself, because every word and every poem, I looked at it with a critical eye and I said, well, it has to be me I wrote it, but maybe by saying that I might inject something else. I don't really go back and change, but I'm telling you about the experience. It was a very, very, not transforming at my age, but very powerful experience. And I thought of my dad. Now, this is an important point, especially now that all over, me personally, I am having friends who are younger than me who are starting to suffer forms of dementia and Alzheimer's, we don't like to mention it. But I'm very upfront, which I'm real. I used to say, I missed it by that to go into politics, but I'm like Mia Markley. You notice she gets to the, you know, she say, it's your responsibility. The child down the road don't have nothing to eat. You cook a one, part and carry down there. It's a we society, not a me. Precisely. So I started looking at what's happening around me. And I said, my dad passed a few years ago at 97. Wow. And up to the days before, his brain and his memory was fantastic. Excellent. And I said, maybe genealogically, because I wouldn't go into all that far. We have a history from him, not his father, but other members of the paternal side, living to 100 and close to that. Wow. And I said, maybe I could be granted that. Well, God, you know best. But whatever it is, I'm getting on in age. And I have a good faculty up there. My brain works like clockwork, like a like a child doing common entrance. I, I have it going. So why don't you use it? And now with COVID, with your daughter encouraging you to have a sort of early retirement, as I always said, I'll work till I drop. So putting everything together, I don't need to, to say it. You you get the picture. Yeah. You get the dream. I say, you got it. God has intervened. He has given you an opportunity to do what you always wanted to do, to share with others and to put your work forward. So those are some of the, I wasn't expecting you're going to produce your poems and put it on the market. You're not really like thinking what it's going to do for you. I'm thinking when reader and writer connect fireworks, I'm thinking of the ignition. People who are going to say, oh my goodness, it made me fall in love again. Or I would give love another try because I see the joy you get from loving wow. unconditionally. Yeah, 
I really oh, did. Oh. I, mean, I mentioned that guy, half of the empanada. Oh, me gifting him three dark chocolate truffles. Just to give him the dark chocolate that he loves or the patty, because you know Jamaicans, especially men, how they love the patty. And just to do that, the joy. And there are other poems. There's a poem called Joy. You bring me joy. I mean, this is not just like putting words together. And may I say, my book is no masterpiece on poetry as poetic form of technique, of empty boasting that you can put some words together. You're so great. Oh, no, no, real poets like me or writers on the whole in this category, genuine, are just doing what they put on earth to do basically. In so the book is a masterpiece of, it's a gift from God. The book is magical. Oh. When, I read, when I read a writer who said, oh, a collection, this is true, a collection of poetry in a book should read like a, from first poem to love, it should be complete. And the first poem, listen, should speak to the last. I said, oh my God, I should have done a little research before, but no, I, I didn't. I never did research on how people put it together. It all right. happened. But you know what happened? Guess what? The first poem is called Photos, and it's viewing the old album in the, the, to avoid depression. And yes. it's kind of speaking, somebody has gone, but you familiar facial expressions, these photos are inhabiting my mind where they find a secure home. And photos in the air like celebratory balloons. And when you see the last poem, which you, so you have a brain on you or something connects us. Well, your dad, your dad lived, was my neighbor. I saw your dad cook boiling and my mother comment how, Tia, you see that man? Now that's a man for you. That man goes down early and gets fish and comes back and cleans them and peels the banana and makes more. Not for himself, for everybody. Yes. Me? So anyway, enough on that note, I think I got my point across. Yes, so, powerful. I can see yeah. that, you know, it, it was really uh, powerful as you describe it, a powerful experience for you in putting this work together. So yes. let's let's look at photos spoke to pandemic because yes. pandemic I'm not going into it but you have a question on it. Sure. So I'll wait I'll wait to go on it. Sure, I'll sure, sure. And and uh, let's let's look at the poem that you have Love Challenge on page 10. Explain to us what you believe are some of the challenges of love and how you think these can be overcome. Well, the audience is a real audience. There are human beings out there and they know what those challenges are. But commonly, here in the Caribbean, obviously, there would be things like substance abuse, one party having a, usually, sadly, the male having a poor perspective on women's rights and the role of the woman. But I'm not, you know, stressing that. It could be things like that, that could be challenges. Of course, there are things like even financial challenges. Uh -huh. Let's face it, those are real things. Uh -huh. um, poor communications where one party is more introverted and communications just do not get off the ground. You know, level of education don't mean communication. You have highly educated people who sometimes voluntarily tell you, we don't co communicate well, that's our problem. Yeah. Not to do with education. I mean, could be, but not always. But I want to refer to Michael Jordan's statement, because we all know Michael Jordan. Obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, you don't just stop. You start looking around. You can't break it, but you might be able to climb up. <laughs> And wow. time over, or you might find you could go around it. So this is what I'm saying. Don't give up. You have obstacles in a relationship or a friendship that's not going so smooth. 
deal with it. Don't give up. So Power that's what Moses said. Powerful. And the point yes, yes. Powerful, powerful. So you mentioned some of the challenges in love that can um, be substance abuse, uh, a poor perspective. We never want to mention it. But I can speak to that. Infidelity can really... Infidelity, yeah. Hold on or to give up. You know, yes. they come to time. You know, you can't deal with it. And I know for the men listening, it could be a woman, for whatever reason, going out of line. So infidelity could be a love challenge. And the man could be, you know, I want to be inclusive of men in this topic. Could be thinking, shall I hold on? To hold on or give up, as the poem says, continue wearing a smile, keeping, you know, don't rock the boat or get real and face it. And usually it is to get real. There's another poem that speaks to the challenge. It's called Not an Argument, but an Experience. Mm -hmm. And it says, We bring to the table different perspectives. Yes. Don't rush into it like a mad dog. Yes. Apply solutions. We come back to the topic of the book, all for love. Yeah. And back to unconditional love. Yes. Because when God is in the package, you're going to find, you know what to do. You turn to God, you look at how he operates, you know how to face the challenge. Wow. Wow. Powerful. So with God in the equation, he can help you overcome the challenges of love. Uh, because yeah. has, he has already demonstrated the greatest love and unconditional love to us. And I like the analogy you use about when you hit a wall, you don't just have to just sit there and, and say, okay, this is the end of the, the road necessarily. But there are you can climb, you can go around, there are different options. I like that, Marilyn. And in, in, on page 53, in the poem, Love in Moderation, you caution, don't be too overwhelming. Does this suggest the expression of love should be controlled? What would be your words of advice? Okay, well, I said I'm up front and here I come again. Each and every poem in All for Love emanates or originates or springs from a situation, an encounter. It doesn't have to be any intimate relationship you know, sexual intimacy and all of that, because that the perfect thank you and the half an empanada, as long as I've known that person, it has not been that tight for whatever reason, don't ask me, but it's so beautiful to love somebody in that way. Hereupon, I am encouraging people to love, but I am cautioning uh -huh. how to do, and this is the reason. I love somebody so much, but I tend to be like that all my life. It's like overkill, over, overdrive, love so much. That person had an anxiety problem. They're not capable, and until he explained it to me, I, I didn't get it. Had been in the army and came out, maybe had to do certain bad things in the right. army. Right. It's like an police and came out and suffers it. And if you just meet somebody and you're not seeing them that often, it takes time until they will tell you, because you may not know people who knows the person. Yes. You may not know the man or woman who knows him. So you're dependent on him. And then he's suffering anxiety. He's taking time to tell you about himself. But do you know what happened in short? Jump ahead. He could not express himself. And it was nothing to do with not loving or wanting to show love. Mm -hmm. And he found it very scary that I would love to see him every day. And I was I was a bit green. And I was thinking, my goodness, you're so lucky that I would, you know, climb every mountain and cross every river to see you. And you're saying, well, hold it. So in short, don't scare off a potentially good partner. Whether wow. a man scaring off a woman or a woman scaring off a man. Be patient, be understanding, 
and look into the situation before you start, as he used to call it, crazy love. You could be scaring off a potentially great life partner by being so overwhelming, as, as they say in Vinci and all over the world, too much for one thing, good for nothing. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Did I answer? Yes, you did. Um, and in a very profound way and a very practical way. And what you share is no light matter. And it is it is a very common scenario because guess what? Opposites often attract. And so you may have somebody high energy, you know, very ex and it's oftentimes it's based in how they, that person has been socially conditioned and how they're brought up. So you may, be, may have somebody that's very comfortable and used to showing love and hugging and, you know, speaking and gushing with love. And then you may have somebody else who have, may, may have not have been, ha may not have had that experience or may have been traumatized. Or as you said, that's example in the arm. You don't know what person's backgrounds are. And so can they are doing, it goes back to the love languages that we give and express love in different ways, right? So whereas some persons may be physical touch, others may be gifts, maybe acts of service and they're doing all these good things for you and you're not appreciating the love because you want the gifts or the physical touch or the quality time or the words of affirmation and therein often lies the challenge. As you say, try not to be too overwhelming, but try to understand how the other person receives love so that you can communicate effectively. Because if you're speaking Spanish and that person understands no word of Spanish, all the lovely words in Spanish you're telling them is to no avail. <laughs> so what you say is very practical. So I, I, now I now have a greater understanding of what you meant. Now you've made that into intervention. I know the audience is really rising up on the topic and they're motivated. So let me <laughs> give the juicy bit. It's not really such a, a, it's a positive thing, but it shows you a bad side of it. But I have to share it to give substance to your wonderful book. You know what the guy said? He said, listen, I've been there before. And I said, what's this about? He said, they, and then this was, this was confirmed by a mutual friend who had known him long before me, actually. He was her manager and she's an older woman. So you kind of respect in love matters, the older head. And she said, listen, you love the friendship. Don't do anything. If you want to enjoy it, she said it this way. She said, you see what happened to the other one? Because you know what he told me? He said, look, I've been there before. There was a woman who loved me like that. And she said, crazy love. And he had to spend a lot of money to get an injunction. She was like stalking him. Wow. When he changed where he was living, another friend said, at night, he saw her car parked up there. Like just she hoping. So that's, just that's an example that you share of not going too far in love, you know? And it could be dangerous. Right. And I, can be. I read on the topic. And I read on the topic and they said it comes short of the, the profession calling it a disease. Yeah. But I said this guardedly and the reason I wasn't going to bring it up because, you know, nothing is separate so perfectly right because there may be and there are cultures. I think India is one where people love extremely Okay, so I didn't want to get into to right. say it's right or wrong. Because right. quite frankly, me, I I can be a good candidate for overloving. Right. But because I'm so wise and worth, I use my skill as a poet, not just to put out, oh, it's great to be in love. I mean, how boring. <laughs> but when, when you get to degree. I think what I wrote they could even help somebody from it, it, most definitely Marilyn taking themselves out of the world. You get me? 
Most definitely, Marilyn. And thanks again for sharing such you know um, profound work. So let's go on to the, the poem that you mentioned, Pandemic Love, right? You end your poem with that poem with the lines, the pandemic closed and opened doors. Some couples will remain together bonded. Others will emerge wounded or dumbfounded. What advice would you give to those who have been wounded during this period? Right. So the thing is, wounded. Well, wounded is a bad thing. It's seen as a bad thing. But the truth of the matter is that when you're wounded, you are going to find that you are like that diamond that was chiseled. Wow, you're, wow, going wow. To, you're going to get clarity. You're going to emerge beautiful. There is a, I don't know where I got this one from, but all my years, I can have so many quotations. Show me your hands. Do they have scars from giving? Show me your feet. Are they wounded in service? So, listen, the pandemic did, a, as I said in America, did a number on everybody everywhere. So if you were unfortunate and came out wounded, and as I said, some people come out dumbfounded, because some things we'll never be able to understand. And we don't even know if the things happened because of the pandemic. Or if our the trajectory of our lives would have been even worse, we nobody knows for certain. Precisely. So, all, right. All I'm saying, you come out wounded. Believe in things like reassurance, trust, and honesty. Always honesty. Be true to yourself, because. You might be saying you're wounded because, you know, during the pandemic this and he didn't try to help you and this, and you could be going on. And if you really sat down and got honest with yourself, you might find that you really didn't do much yourself. Wow. It takes two hands to clap. <laughs> ah, good one. So I think that's enough on the topic. The audience will come today own conclusions on that. Sad, I do feel your pain if you came out wounded. It's an unfortunate thing. But trust, reassurance, and honesty, those can help. Thank very. I, I agree. Very powerful words of advice, Marilyn. It, it reminds me of something I read recently that you may face defeat but don't allow yourself to be defeated. Mm. So just like you say, wounded may sound like a really bad thing. No one wants to be wounded, but think of the process of a diamond being formed, right? And being chiseled into a beautiful creation. And you know, um, like we have to be broken for us, for the master to create a masterpiece from our brokenness. So wounding is not an end. Wounding may be the beginning <laughs> of some of, of you know learning and picking up yourself and dusting yourself off and daring to go again. And so, you know, I would join Marilyn in encouraging you that this is not the end of your story. Whether or not you've been wounded or dumb, dumbfounded by these last few years that we've gone through, your latter shall be greater. You have to have faith. You have to, and with if you put your trust in God, he has, he has written a book for you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He has plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. I would encourage you to believe on the word of God, declare the word of God over your life and take tangible steps to move towards your growth and your development and your learning your lessons and, and daring to love again. <laughs> Wow, really enjoying this chat with you, Marilyn. What advice would you give to budding poets listening to us? Well, always keep on keeping on. Uh -huh. And a bit of information, it gives me an opportunity, if I may, to give uh -huh. a little talk to my upcoming book. It's going to be called Outpouring 101 Poems. Wow. And in that book, 
I have left pages, it's in 12 sections, each month of the year from January to December. And after each section, you have a few pages lined so you can write. And in that book, I'm encouraging people to think, you don't have to look at it as think of becoming a poet, maybe you say at my stage or age, I want to become, it's not about that. Don't get too, you know, into the categorization, but expressing yourself, but going beyond just merely journaling. So you can use it to journal as well as to develop a poem. And on my website, I offer a lot of advice to budding poets. And I also teach people how to appreciate a poem because a bit of the feedback from this book was, you know, I tell you the honest truth. I think I love poetry, but I don't understand it. And I don't know how to even read a poem. So not that any of us know how to do anything. I always say, even as a skilled expert in your field, you are learning every day. So mm -hmm. we are all learn. And I certainly am learning more and more, and it's a joy to pass on because I would say it, younger people who want to write poetry, a lot of the potholes and the pitfalls. So the outpouring 101 would be a book you'd want to get once it comes out, if you're a budding poet. So that answers it. But basically, keep on keeping on. And be sure that you move with the times because let's face it, Without a reader, who are you? Indeed. To be, um, to be given, you want to give. But if you don't serve up something that people can understand, like I would like to write a few poems in dialect, and I will yet try, because I want to reach more of my Vinci people. Take, for example, our gardeners say, I've read some poems to them. And they were quite fascinated. They've also got copies of the book. There you go. Please. I said to them, I, I translate some of it in dialect. So that's, so I'm putting this out for budding poets. If you have been central, whatever age, maybe you want to try. I'm not saying because we don't have our language in a literary form, but we can try. And other poets have done it. Our famous poet, Shea Keen, I could not be here and not mention him. I wish everybody to try to get copies of his poems and the Volcanic Suite or Souffre Suite, those poems written by of blessed memory, Sheikin, would show you how he tries to use dialect. And of course, Louise Bennett, who I was very influenced by in Jamaica and Camu Brathwit, who died in Barbados. He also talked about nation language you know, getting away. And even Derek Walcott was torn between the King's English and dialect, wow. you know? Mm -hmm. So for budding poets, these are things you want to pay attention to the concept of nation language as put forward by Camu, K-A-M-U. Go on the Google, you'll find his things about his work. He passed recently. And I wish you all the best but in quits of whatever age. I encourage you and I wish you well. My website is almost ready. It's marlinvalentine.com. And on that website, you'll be able to read my poems. I love to share. And you'll be able to maybe see some videos with me reading my work, other people reading it, and get tips on how to approach poetry. So we're looking out for that website, marlinvalentine.com. And so right. speaking of that, so where can persons purchase a book and where can they follow you to get more information about when your other book is coming out? Um, where can they hear you read poetry maybe? Uh, where can they find out when your website will be ready? How can they get this information? I would say in the new year, the website is, I don't want to say it's ready. It's almost ready. Right. I've done my part. So in the, in the new year, I would hope that 
January 1. If you Google marlinvalentine.com, you'll be upon the website. There will be an icon, purchase book. You can go, if you will purchase it through Amazon on my website, or you can go straight to Amazon. It would be there. You put all for love on my name, the book will come up. You can read this reviews that are there. And bonds are for those in the diaspora. Bonds and Noble Online, it's also there. And in St. Vincent, it's at Reliance Stationery. And in the run up to Christmas, I'll take the opportunity to put it in the Joshua Center and in a few I wouldn't name because I haven't spoken to them. So it right. would be right. But to get it all around town, <laughs> get it all about so that people can find the book and they can enjoy it. Yes. Thank it makes you. a good read. It certainly makes a good read. Um, these poems are really delightful and they really inspire. And so I really thank you once again, Marilyn. Can I say one more thing? Sure, go right ahead. To, to write down. And so, my day, I am not famous, but thanks to technology, if you just Google Marilyn Valentine, you'll see pictures that make me look better than I really look. <laughs> Uh, and you will also see my Facebook. You will see everything there. My email I even give out. I'm, I'm private, but in another way, because I love to share, I give. cmvalentine7 at gmail.com. But you don't even need to remember that. You just Google Marvin Valentine. You'll find me on Facebook. You'll find me around. So that's it. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. So audience members, I know you've been very patient and I hope you've been liking and sharing this program because we've learned so many powerful nuggets and it really has been a delight. I would like to acknowledge Mandela, my sister in St. Vincent watching. Thank you, Mandy. Melissa Crichton, Valentine is watching. <laughs> Auntie Claire is watching. Mandela says, good afternoon. Dr. Arusha and Marilyn, good afternoon again, Mandy. Marlena Joseph, thanks for, for logging on again, is watching. Michelle Peters from Grenada is watching. She said, good evening from Grin. Cicely Joseph Johnson, welcome, welcome, is watching. Paula Janus, thank you for watching. My brother Bantu in St. Vincent. Joan Moore is watching. Yolanda Andrews Burke has joined us. She says, congrats, Marilyn. And she says, it is a tragedy written in black verse and is an attempt um, to, in part, to reinvigorate serious drama. Sonia Leslie, Auntie Sonia is watching. Denise, my sister in Canada, says great conversation. Anessa Daker is watching. Thank you so much. Um, and Geneve Miller Quo is watching. And let's see, I don't think I've missed. So if you, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to share them for Marilyn to answer or any more comments. Any, do you have a favorite poem in this book, Marilyn? Anything else you wanna share with us? Yes, I do. It's very short, so. Cause you can feel free to read a little, uh, uh, probably a verse of one of them. Yes, 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 yes. And I would love to tell our audience that, well, I think I said it before, each and every poem comes out of a situation, okay? Something that actually happened. So on page 40 is the poem, at first, I called it an Easter vacation in Barbados. But then I said, that sounds so plain. <laughs> and I came up with this. And I'm sure you will agree, this really sets it apart. Mind as film. Poem as photo. Word as truth. And the person the subject of the poem, the gentleman. He is Mr. Jamaican too. See, I seem to have 
so many Jamaican men and women friends. So to all you Jamaicans out there, hi. <laughs> Michael Manley said I was an honorary Jamaican and so did Edward Siaga. So maybe I am. <laughs> anyway, he is now blind. So this is why the poem begins. If there was a photograph, I would place it on your plate, but you would not be able to partake, you see, because he can't see, okay? How fortunate our times together remain indelible engraved on my mind. So fortunately, our times together were so wonderful, so substantial that they remain indelible engraved on my mind. Thanks to my ability to capture memories and poems, leaving tears behind. One pays a high price when one loves unconditionally. We were there before, no new terrain. Opening oneself to disappointment, grief, loss, unending fragility. When one is ready, the other is gone. <laughs> I live that. I know what I'm talking about. When one is ready, oh my God, the other is gone. I used to say, and we are both, there's another poem in the book coming, we're both left with music. <laughs> What's that? I said, I used to say, and it is it comes out in a poem in my new book. Uh -huh. When one or the other, the other is gone, and we both left with music. Wow. Music. <laughs> yes, we know about that. <laughs> the music is doing it. Okay. Both are sometimes torn. A sleepy, unfamiliar beach house on the west coast of Barbados almost slips gracefully into the ocean, carrying us willingly along, as if we quickly feel at ease, as if we belong. And then the next line is a Jamaican dialect, which the publishers couldn't understand, understandably. And so rather than create, and in the interest of time, I said, my dear, I'll explain it to you one day, but just leave it. And I put it this way. So I'm going to read how it should be. Almost slips, the house almost slips gracefully into the ocean, carrying us willingly along as we quickly feel at ease, as if we belong. Tanina, we own yard. Yes. <laughs> Standing. I noticed that. <laughs> Did you get it? Yes. The Jamaicans in the audience get it. We tan in a yard. Yes. And during COVID, my Jamaican friend, he would say to me, he knows Melissa, he'd say to Melissa, and I, well, all you just tan a yard. Yes. Stay, Stay home. No. <laughs> so, so as we quickly feel at ease, as if we belong, like, we turn in a yard, like staying in our own yard. The laughter of the two children brings the scene alive, competing with the crashing sound of the waves, the screaming of the Jackson Five, a happy foursome oozing energy, totally exuberant, fueled by inviting tropical Easter weather, the sun displaying its brilliance, energetic you, mastering breaststrokes, me, content to throw my cares to the bay. The two young ones at play, they engage in nanny leading the way, leaving us to enjoy time together. Intimacy being rare when four prying eyes are forever in search mode, able to pay through every crevice, breaking through every cord. But heaven it was, an Easter holiday in Barbados. Wow. One will be falling over and over again, and never in vain. No lobbies to navigate, no phone calls to decline or take. No suffering at the mercy of negligent service staff, just free and peaceful, watching the world go by, having a laugh, far from the maddened crowd, we rest our frenzy in our cozy little beach cottage. Both of us aligned on the same page, very important, aligned on the same page. With hindsight, it was the microcosm of the macrocosm that for a long time haunted me. Blue skies 
are all I could see. Mm -hmm. Blue sky are all I see. I was busily building dreams, hoping to manifest a desired outcome. With the passage of time, the picture changed. So again, those who came out wounded, listen, things happen, the picture changes sometimes. But something central remained the same. The notion that there is no higher reward than a quiet, minimalist life in communication with a loved one. I say that from the bottom of my heart. Amen. You ain't got anything better to buy. <laughs> buy that. It's if you can get true. that, take that. It's nothing better. I deal Plans. physically together, but physically together or physically apart, it is not about head, not this time. It is all about heart. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Beautiful, beautiful. To my eyes. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks so much again, Marilyn. I'm looking to see if there are any other comments, audience members. I really want to thank you. Um, this year I was led to interview authors and it really has, I've learned a lot and it has brought delight to me as I'm sure it has brought delight to you too. So I really want to thank you for this piece of work that you put out there now on Amazon. So guys, this would make a nice Christmas gift, all for love. Um, so as I told you, we'll go on a break and I will announce on social media when our next program will be in 2023. I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a wonderful season. We're entering the Christmas season and I want you to focus on love. Focus on love. As Marilyn says in her poem, you know, there it's nothing like spending that quality time with a loved one. Minimally, you don't have to have everything in the world. It's not about material things but about sharing each other's company in those quiet moments, those are priceless and we should treasure it. And for those of us who are, may feel alone at this time, don't stay in your little corner, reach out. There are persons around, you are loved. God is love, God loves you and there's nothing that can separate you from his love. So I just want to remind you that despite what you're going through, God loves you. God created you for a purpose and I encourage you to walk in that purpose and the greatest purpose that we have here on earth is to love, to love him with all our heart, soul and mind and to love others as we love ourselves. So Marilyn, I'll give you the opportunity to say any final words and then close us in a word of prayer, please. Well, a big thank you to everyone who joined us and I am really looking forward to hearing from some of you when my website is launched early in January, you might want to refer to this program and that way we can interact and I can use my skills to enhance your lives. Powerful, powerful, powerful. All right, can you close us in a word of prayer, please? Thank you. I want the audience to know that I love hymns. And so my prayer is in the form of a hymn. As I said, I no longer have a great voice. Those of you who know it can hum it. I'm really basically going to read some of the words, but you can also go on YouTube and put in when morning gills the sky. Or sometimes it says, when morning gills the skies, whichever you put, you'll see various choirs singing it beautifully. And without much ado, let me carry on with it. When morning glides the sky, my heart awakening cries. May Jesus Christ be praised. To God, the word on high, the hosts of angels cry. May Jesus Christ be praised. I like at work and pray. To Jesus I repay. 
When sleep a balm denies, my silent spirit sighs. May Jesus Christ be free. When evil thoughts molest, with this I shield my breast. Does sadness fill my mind? Is solace there I find? Or fades my earthly bliss? My comfort still is this. In Jesus Christ, please. In heaven's eternal bliss, the lovely strain is this. The paths of darkness fair, when this sweet chant they hear. Let earth's wide circle round in joyful notes resound. Let air and sea and sky from depth to height reply. May Jesus Christ be praised. Amen. May Jesus Christ be praised. Amen. May Jesus Christ be praised. We encourage you to praise him in all you do. Praise him in all you do. And you're going out and you're coming in. And we have some final comments. Don John says, great job, Marilyn. Congratulations. Mandela says, beautiful poetry. Wonderful program. Thank you so much, Mandela. Thank you, audience members. And I wish each and every one of you, I know I'm a bit early. You see my Christmas tree in the background and I'm wearing my laugh, love, glow top. So I am, I am practicing what I preach. And I really wish for, for you all a wonderful and powerful end to 2022 and a bright and prosperous 2023 when it comes. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for listening. We do this all for love. One love. <laughs> and until next time, keep blossoming. God bless you all. Thanks again, Marilyn. Thank you.